Hi, welcome to Observation of Neutrinos from Supernova 1987A at Kamiokande 2. On February 24th, 1987, light from a supernova in the Large Magellanic Cloud was first observed on Earth after traveling for 168,000 years. This supernova was bright enough to be visible to the naked eye, and it gave scientists an excellent opportunity to study a supernova as it happened. This supernova became known as Supernova 1987A. But hours before the supernova became visible, three neutrino experiments, Kamiokande 2, IMB, and Boxon, registered clusters of neutrino events in their detectors. Here, we'll talk about the results from the most sensitive of these three experiments, Kamiokande 2. So, Kamiokande 2 was an experiment that started running in 1986. If you watched the video, Unexplained Mysteries of the Standard Model, Grand Unified Theories, and Limits on Proton Decay, the name Kamiokande might sound familiar to you. That's because in that video we talked about a result from a successor experiment, Super Kamiokande. Okay, so let's talk about what you'll need for this video. This video will be easier to understand if you're familiar with the Poisson distribution. For more information, you might be interested in the videos in the Poisson Statistics playlist. Also, toward the end of this video, we'll compare results from Kamiokande 2 to the Five Sigma Convention for Discovery in Particle Physics. If you'd like more information on that, you can check out the video Five Sigma, the Standard for Discovery in Particle Physics. We'll also briefly mention the Look Elsewhere effect. You can find more information on this in the video Why the Look Elsewhere effect is important. You might also be interested in the other videos in the Discoveries in Particle Physics playlist. Okay, let's get started. So, when a star explodes in a supernova like 1987A, most of the energy released is in the form of neutrinos. All flavors of neutrinos and antineutrinos, so electron, muon, and tau neutrinos, are released with a typical energy of order 10 MeV. So it's reasonable that an experiment designed to detect neutrinos, like Kamiokande 2, would see some effects. Let's start by seeing roughly how these neutrinos are detected. So here we show a schematic of Kamiokande 2. It consists of a large water tank lined with hundreds of photomultiplier tubes, or PMTs. The tank is surrounded by an outer detector, which is used to shield against and identify events from background processes. So those are processes that we're not interested in. Okay, so a neutrino comes into the tank. It interacts with an electron in the water, giving the electron a substantial kick. This high-speed electron then radiates light in a phenomenon known as Cherenkov radiation. This light is then registered by the photomultiplier tubes. Alternatively, an electron antineutrino may enter the tank and interact with a proton in the water. They can produce a positron, which is the antiparticle of the electron, which then emits Cherenkov radiation, which is then registered by the PMTs. In either case, the signal picked up by the detector 
is a pattern of light in the PMTs. When the detector registers a possible detection, we will call the occurrence an event. So the physicists at Kamiokande 2 looked to see if their experiment had recorded evidence of neutrinos in their detector between February 21st at 1609 and February 24th at 731 Universal Time. If neutrinos from supernova 1987A would show up in their detector, they would be expected to arrive in a cluster lasting of order 10 seconds. So they looked for 10 second intervals which had a cluster of events. They found two successive 10 second intervals which contained a total of 12 events. The first interval started on February 23, 1987 at 7.35.35 Universal Time, with an uncertainty on that starting time of about one minute. And this interval contained 10 events. The remaining two events were in the next 10 second interval. So the experiment saw a very intriguing cluster of neutrino-like events. However, an event is more reliable if it is registered by many PMTs. So they specifically looked at events registered by at least 30 PMTs. They found that six events in the first interval and one event in the second interval were each registered by at least 30 PMTs. However, the observation of these events does not necessarily imply that these events were caused by supernova 1987A. It is conceivably possible that these are neutrinos, but from other sources. And additionally, there are other processes that can mimic a neutrino signal. So processes that look like the process you're interested in, which here is supernova neutrinos, but aren't actually what you're looking for, are called background processes. Physicists must be able to estimate how many of these background events will show up in their experimental data. So the physicists at Kamiokande 2 had to figure out how many background events would be expected in a 10 second interval. To do this, they looked at events in their detector over a much longer period of time about 43 days. They again broke this up into 10 second intervals. They looked at how many of these 10 second intervals over the 43 days contained 0, 1, 2, etc. events which registered on at least 30 PMTs. Except for the interval of interest on February 23rd, 1987 at 7.35.35 35, universal time, none of these 10 second intervals had more than three events that were registered by 30 PMTs. Furthermore, excluding the interval of interest, they found that the number of events registered by at least 30 PMTs in a 10 second interval closely followed a Poisson distribution with an expected number lambda that was equal to 0.0121. So, under normal conditions, when there isn't a new supernova, we would expect the average number of events registered by at least 30 PMTs in a given 10 second interval would be lambda, which is 0.0121. The number of events in a given 10 second interval would then be described by the Poisson distribution. So, the probability to observe n events in the 10 second interval, given that lambda were expected, is equal to lambda to the n times e to the minus lambda over n factorial. So under the null hypothesis, which here is the hypothesis of no supernova neutrinos, what's the probability that a given 10 second interval would contain six or more events that are registered by at least 30 PMTs. 
we can add up the probabilities. So we add up the Poisson probability to observe n events, given that lambda are expected, and we add that up from n equals 6 to infinity. And it turns out for lambda equal to 0 0.0121, this probability is extremely small. So it's about 4.3 times 10 to the minus 15. So the probability that they would have six or more of these uncorrelated events in a 10 second interval is exceedingly small. So the physicists at Kamiokande 2 also considered the possibility that there could be some background process that would produce a bunch of correlated events. The Kamiokande 2 physicists also looked for processes other than a supernova that could produce a whole burst of events over about 10 seconds. They only came up with one possible background, a cosmic ray muon. Shortly before the cluster of interesting events, there were four cosmic ray muon events which occurred in the detector. So they calculated an upper limit on the probability that one of these muons could have resulted in the subsequent cluster of events. They concluded that the probability for a muon to produce a cluster like the one that was observed was much less than 8 times 10 to the minus 12. As there were four muon events, the probability that any of the four would produce such a cluster is four times that, but still much, much less than 3 times 10 to the minus 11. So the muons observed in the detector before the cluster could not plausibly be the cause of the cluster. OK, so now let's ask the question, would this result meet the 5 sigma criterion for a discovery often used in particle physics? We won't get into the details of the five sigma criterion here. In short, an observation would meet this criterion if, under the null hypothesis, the probability of obtaining a result as unusual or more unusual than the one actually observed is less than 3 times 10 to the minus 7. We saw above that the probability that background processes would produce a cluster of events in a given 10 second interval, at least as large as what Kamiokande 2 observed, was much, much, much less than 3 times 10 to the minus 7. So we see that Kamiokande 2's result would in fact meet the 5 sigma criterion. If you'd like more information on the 5 sigma discovery convention, you can check out the video 5 sigma, the standard for discovery in particle physics. The Kamiokande 2 experiment looked for clusters of events in 10 second intervals over the time period of February 21st at 1609 to February 24th at 731, a period of over 2.6 days. What was calculated above was the probability of observing that many or more events in a given 10 second interval. But there are many of order 20,000 10 second intervals in 2.6 days. So one might be worried that we should have calculated the probability for them to have observed such a cluster of events in any of these intervals and not just in one interval. We have the probabilities for background processes to produce a cluster as large as that observed in a given interval we can multiply these probabilities by a trials factor of the number of independent intervals, which is of order 20,000. Applying such a factor would be taking into account the look elsewhere effect. The result would still be highly significant, but maybe not at the five sigma level. However, the Kamiokande 2 experiment was accompanied by similar, although less significant, results in IMB and Boxon. The IMB and Boxon experiments 
reported their events as coming within approximately one minute of the Kamiokande 2 result. And we should note that the uncertainty of the time of the Kamiokande 2 events is given as one minute. So instead of asking for the probability of Kamiokande 2 finding such a cluster in any 10 second interval over the 2.6 days, we could ask for the probability of the Kamiokande 2 finding such a cluster compatible with the timing of the IMB and Boxon clusters. We should note that if we instead ask this latter question, we are technically including some information from the other experiments in our assessment of the significance of this result. So if we adopt this latter philosophy, instead of multiplying by the number of independent 10 second intervals in 2.6 days, we would multiply by the number of independent 10 second intervals in a time period of order one minute. In this case, the trials factor would be of order 10 instead of of order 20,000, and therefore it would not affect the result very much. So while the look elsewhere effect is relevant for this experiment, it may be a large or small effect depending on exactly what question you want to answer. If you want to know more about the look elsewhere effect, you can watch the video why the look elsewhere effect is important. Okay, let's briefly summarize. So here we've looked at the observation of neutrinos from supernova 1987A in the Kamiokande 2 experiment. We've seen how they detected these neutrinos and that their observation was highly significant. If you found this video interesting, you might be interested in taking a look at more recent experiments in neutrino astronomy, such as IceCube.